So this one's kind of hard for me to actually type out, but we're going to talk about matrices really quick. And I'm just going to show you. Oh, it's down here. This guy. So if you look at this matrix on whatever page this is, 15. Let's make that bigger. You can see that these are all ints. Matrix has to be the same type. It could be all characters, it could be all whatever, it has to be all the same type. And here I have it labeled how these are named. Since you can't just use a square bracket and say one number, it's not going to know the two dimensional parts of the matrix. You have to give it a little bit more information. So you have to give it a row and then a column. There's always going to be row and then a column. If you want to take the entire column, or I'm sorry, column then. I always get this wrong and I always have to get up. So this is column then row. Great work. Okay. This is why I label it, because I always have to look this up. Okay, so comma one is give all of column or all of column one. So it's all rows. So it is row then column. So row is left blank, so it assumes all. That can be a little confusing when you just see a comma. So I'm pointing it out, and I have it written here because I have to reference this. Uh, it is row all column one. So it gives you one, two, three, four, five. If you want to do column four, it's comma four. Same thing with rows. If you want to grab all the columns for, say, sample one, say row one, comma, all by the leading letter. And that will automatically grab the whole set of those. Again, it's still using brackets, so it looks kind of like a vector, but if you see those brackets with a comma, it's likely a matrix or a data frame because it's two dimensional. Does that make so sense? It's always first row and then column. Yes, row and then column. I question myself when I shouldn't have. So when you do things like this and you want to see for matrix one, or for matrix, and you want to identify what's in row one, column one, it'll return to number one because that is the row and then the column. If you want all of row one, again, it's just row, comma, and it will return one, six, 11, 16. Okay. Yeah. There's a couple ways to generate matrices. One of them's two build what we just did. So let's do that. We'll call it Y because I felt like it. Matrix, thankfully, its own function. And if you look into this, it wants to know what the numbers are giving it, how many rows, and how many columns. So in this case, we'll do 1 through 20 and row equals 5 and call equals four. This should match what I just, oh, excuse me, showed you. And it's even nice enough to label how you refer to each column and matrix. One thing to note, this defaults, which you can see by looking at the matrix help file, to not writing your numbers by column not by row. So you're going to read one, two, three, four, five, going down column one. If you were to want to switch this, we could look at the matrix. And you will see the default by row is false. So if we turn that to true, it will make it by row. So let's try that. If you type, if you put up, it lets you scroll through your, your commands. So we will add by row equals <laughs> true. And now you'll see that it runs by. What was the question mark matrix? Question mark at any function name will pull up the help file for you. If there's one thing you bring back from the end of this course, it would be that. <laughs> it's just constant. I always do it. Now, what if we didn't want to give it a set of numbers like 1 to 20? 
and we wanted to give it a set of, I don't know, random numbers. So it can do, we're still going to use this matrix function, right? But here it's looking for one piece of information, right? And we want to give it a list of other information. This is where that C comes in. So C, one, two, four, seven, whatever we want to put in there. I'm going to make sure I have enough to make the right number of rows. Uh, actually, let's just do four. And row equals two, and call equals two, let's do by row equals true. This here is the good example that I was telling you was coming up about why that C is there. If you were to not put that wrapped in a C and you had commas, it's going to think that those are other parameters. It's going to go one is the first thing I'm looking for, two is by row. Three is by column. You need to have a way to connect all of that information and say, this is all input. And by putting that C around it, you're able to do that. It's expecting one piece of information, such as a range or a number, but you want to give it multiple. So you're wrapping it in that C and putting it in there so that these commas are not confused by these commas inside. Does that make a little bit more sense about the C concatenation? You'll see this a lot. It just helps connect all of that information and then internally and use it. It's just like when we did length in the scan. It's using the function within a function, but for some reason, this is a lot more common. So you're using this function to determine if like, this is all one chunk, and then using that as input. See if there's any other things. OK, and then if you wanted to read something as a matrix, we have this lovely file here. Matrix. You can see that this is all numbers. It has rows and columns. If we want to read that in, call it A because that's what it's in the notes, you have to say as matrix, read table, and then give it the name of the file. So I'm getting the answer here because I say as matrix and then read table. Why do you think I do this? Why do I specify that this has to be read as matrix? What do you think the default to read table is? Data frame. This is where people have problems. You read in file and you think it's a matrix and you say read table. It's like, oh, that's how I read in tables. You have to tell R explicitly that it is a matrix in order for it to work as a matrix. And you can see better written it. Now this will show up here, and you'll see like our vectors below. This is really hard to do on this title screen. Um, you get a range here for a vector. Here you see the comma, you know that it's two-dimensional. And you can click on it and it will show you here. Ooh, pretty. The problem is, if you wanted to have those row names and column names, and you had those in your file, but you still wanted it to be a matrix, you can do that. So let's look at matrix with a header. And you can see that I named these, A, B, C. If I imported this directly, just as we did, it would cry, because it's not all the same thing. It's not a matrix, because it has characters, right? There is a helpful parameter to add. <coughs> A equals as matrix, read table, and we're going to give that same file that I just opened, matrix header, and we're going to give it additional header equals true, and row names equals one. Now, when we click this, it names them and it still functions as a matrix. Mm -hmm. I put this in here, written, because this is the number one thing I have to look up. Because row dot names, there's also a row names without a dot. It's very like, hard to keep, keep track of which is which. So it's written there for your reference. This is how you read in something with a header. Header is only going to be the first line. And if you wanted to find row names, you have to tell it which 
uh, column is. So in this case, the first column, if you look at that file, is the row names. If, in, if your data is structured where the row names are the sixth column in, you can also define that too. You can say row names equals six. Whatever is the non-numerical data here. Usually it's gonna be one, which is why I gave you that prototype, but that is how you can define row names and headers. You don't have to do both. If you only have one, not a problem. Make sense? So just like length was an inherent characteristic of vector, there's some number of elements, there's some number of rows, there's some number of columns here. Useful information to have, it's n row, a, and call a, and we can also do summary a, which is a very helpful thing in matrices and data frames. It will give you a summary of every column. If it is not a number, it will print out the first column. So if you do, when we do this to the data frame, the first column will likely be names or some other thing. It'll give you a quick uh, idea of what you're looking at. This is great when you're importing data. This confirms what you expect. Make sure it read what it, you expect. It gives you an idea of what kind of data you're dealing with. You hand me a matrix that I've never looked at before. The first thing I'm gonna do is run summary and physically look at it. Okay. So. There we go. Okay, so a little mini quiz time. Uh, I would like you to print the row or column. Element at row three, call four. And just grab, see if you can figure this one out. Row one through four and column two through five. The answers are in the book. They're also more than one. A or uh, for for uh, matrix A. Try that, and that'll give me a chance to troubleshoot with you guys and make sure everybody online is following along. So let's okay. let's do this first one. Who got the third row? So since we're printing it, we'll call it print. And we know it's A. How do you grab just the third row? I'm sorry, what? Where it matches. And then? And then three columns. Because that gives you row three and all the columns. Great. And because you gave it uh, headers when we loaded this in, it will continue to give you the column names which is super convenient, right? So if this was actual real data, we would have a nice little label as to what those are because it's continuing to use those header names. So how do we do then the fourth column? So what, what rows do we want to use, right? If we're using just the fourth column, we want to use all rows. So we can just say comma, because if there's nothing there, it automatically assumes all. And if we want fourth column, four. <clears throat> and this is also displayed. Oh, it doesn't show it on this one. When you give it names, it takes away the, the nice handy. Uh, should still be on Y. There you go. So you see that this is all column, this is all row. So if we wanted to grab a fourth column, which doesn't exist on this one, it's column. Just like we showed here. How about element at row three, column four? You guys are saying it quietly, you gotta say it louder. Three column. Three comma four. It's always rows and columns. As I had to individually derive in my head. And that'll give you that column. Now the tricky one. What do we put in here if we want to grab rows one through four? 
Yep. It works the same way as vectors. And then this one would be 2 whole 5, 2 subset. That same adjective works the same way to modify that data type. And this will give you a portion of a, a, a matrix. 